They say nice guys finish last. Phil was probably one of the nicest guys. He played hardball, and now he is getting paid. I'm going to go over, obviously, the tour signing. It's huge. I'm going to go over his day today. Um, and then I'm going to cover the practice itself. There's a lot of good stuff uh, in both the tour discussion and the actual, the rest of the team and what we saw today. Uh, there's a lot of things outside of the tour contract in today's practice, some really good reporting, uh, some real gems that we can pull out from that. So that's what I'm going to be covering today, guys. I'm uh, doing a light live tonight at 10 p.m. Uh, guys, I sent the email out. You're probably getting it late. I, I had recorded the whole, this podcast, and then the contract came out, so I had to redo it. So let's get straight into the two-a contract, and then I'll get into the rest, because I'm sure a lot of people a lot of people focus on that. Some people are happy. Some people are not. Some people are like, let's see. Um, so Dolphins lost. And I don't mean the team itself. I mean Chris Greer and his front office. They could have done this earlier and save money. Uh, two or one. Uh, we'll see if the team wins. Um, but you look at what he's getting. He's getting $212.4 million, $167 million in guarantees. Uh, Joe Burrow's getting 55, Trevor uh, 55, Tua 53, Goff 53, uh, Herbert, uh, Jackson 52, Herbert and Jackson both getting 52, and Jalen Hurts uh, 51. So if they had done this earlier, they could have probably saved themselves a few million. Goff kind of changed the way things looked. Loves now. He's probably going to get a ton of money. And uh, when you go over to guarantees, uh, you'll see uh, the, the four-year contract. It just puts him, ahead, like I said, he just puts him ahead of, of Goff behind uh, Burrow. Uh, he's eighth highest in the NFL, eighth. So he's not top five. Uh, this is this is going to become a good deal financially as long as he performs well. And by next year, by next year, you're going to be looking sixty. And the whole contract thing with the with the quarterback, that's a whole other discussion. But it's going to keep going up because every year they, the, the owners are making more money. You're tacking on 20 to 25 million to the to the cap. So Dolphins are going to make out. And Chris Kaufman, who's really, really good, uh, really kind of broke it down and said, look, this is three years commitment. So you got this year, you got next year. And then the year after. And look, guys, the next two years, there's so much talent on this team. You're not going to be in position in a draft to get a good quarterback unless somehow you can hit one of those back-end deals, which is like totally rare and a roll of the dice. And so even if you somehow things don't go well, uh, you get a chance to look at Tua for three years. You needed a guy right now to drive this team. Everything's been put into this position. You'll have extra picks next year. And then you can maybe draft a quarterback if this is not the guy you want to compete and replace and you can move off in year four. Or for Tua, he could ball out for the next three years, be healthy, and then get his deal to raise his money before he's 30. And so I think everybody wins here because you could not move off of Tua for the next two years at least because so much talent has been is older talent. You spent so many picks to get the talent here. You got a two year window. Maybe now, if you sign uh, um, Hill next year, you can stretch it out to a three year window. So I'm glad Tua got his money. I think he deserves it. I'm not saying he's the greatest quarterback ever or whatever, uh, but we've had a lot, lot worse. And this guy is in position. He can show who he is. The people who don't like him, they can get the next two or three years to evaluate him. The people who love him, they get the next two or three years to evaluate him. We weren't doing anything else. Uh, I'd rather have him over Dak, who would be closer to 60 next year. And if you don't sign him now and you wait till next year, it's going to go up no matter what. And there are all other teams that would have bid for him. So two is now with us for certainly three years, maybe long term. And this does create cap flexibility, especially when they extend Hill either this season or next. And so that means we can get more free agents next year, sign some of these guys that we want to hold on to long term. So overall, we've built this thing to this point. Chris Greer's philosophy is driving this thing with Mike McDaniel. It's all tied into Tua and everything that we're doing. We get our full eval over the next two years and maybe three, depending on how much success we have. So Tua came out today. And uh, if you look, 
Uh, Travis Wingfield and Omar Kelly, two guys I'm going to cover today. Uh, some people uh, love him. Some people don't. I think Travis Wingfield, he works with the Dolphins. He's got to be a positive guy. That's he, It's his thing. He's a po- But he's valuable. Omar Kelly, some people don't like him because he can be negative or whatever. But he's valuable. Especially Omar Kelly, who I like what he does a lot in preseason and training camp, the information he provides, and Travis Wingfield too. So those are two guys, their observations I'm going to use to cover the whole team. But we'll start off on uh, Tua. Travis Wingfield, you can see the image here. Practice three is over. Fans of the offense will be excited to read this thread. Tua made a ton of wild throws, including a 70-yard TD to Reek, uh, where the play fake got Ramsey to bite. They had a laugh together after Ramsey did the play fake motion. Uh, Tyreek scored on a catch and run, 25 air yards, with Tua threw in a keyhole football between tight coverage and Reek sprung free for a score. HN caught a ball on a similar throw and produced a long TD and catch. Uh, Anthony Walker... Uh, said it feels it's different a different feeling when one is out there. Kendall Fuller, who played against him once, but now he's been seeing him more, says Tua is uh, impressive, and so he came out yesterday. He didn't he didn't do any practice, so the deal must have been done. He came out. They waited to unveil it. He showed why he's the guy. Maybe they signed it right after. I don't know. Uh, but clearly, this guy changes things. The offense was struggling day one and two, which is normal, but he uplifted it. And when I go through the rest of the players, what we saw in practice, a lot of things are going to be clear, guys, because this offensive line struggled. It continues to struggle. And Tehran's not in there. Uh, but what it says is that this offensive line is being carried by the skills and two uplifting what they have in the front. It's not to say we can't win, but clearly Tua changes things with his skill set. Is it enough to get us to the Super Bowl? Is it enough to get us to win Uh, against good teams? I don't know. I think he's a piece of the puzzle. I think the offensive line should get a lot more looks than it has for the past couple of years I've been talking about, and it's gotten a little bit more each year. So he's a piece of the puzzle, obviously a big piece. So let me get into the coverage of the rest of the day, some really, really good stuff. But guys, you remember, when you see the offense go against a defense, and you look at the whole unit, that's not really how you can evaluate what's going on. Because neither side is calling to attack weaknesses, they're not calling plays to take advantage of situations. And that's how a lot of the stuff is getting done. This is just vanilla on vanilla. And there's sometimes, guys, they'll put a safety out there who have got question mark about, and then you score a big touchdown. You look, look, see how good we did on offense. And the safety was there, put there, to, because they know he struggled. They want to see if he can handle the situation. Conversely, it can go the other way, too. It's not to talk about who didn't do whatever, because he does it in the regular season as well. But what you want to evaluate now is discipline on an individual basis. Again, they could take a guy who they know struggles with discipline, put him in there, and you can read the reports while the offense struggle penalties all day. It could be the one guy that they know he's he, if he can't get this down, we're getting rid of him. But they put him there on purpose. So it's the individual discipline that's key, the development from the first day to the last day in that discipline and how each individual player responds with their skill set one-on-one to other guys. Uh, Also, their awareness. These are the things that we can focus on. And there's a lot of goodies in this one. Uh, Both good and bad. Not bad in the sense like these players are doomed, but you're going to see some negative evaluations continue to see how they play out. And you're going to see some good evaluations continue to play out. And that's what we got to do. Add a data set. So that's what I'm going to do next year, guys. Uh, But first, the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the views. You guys have been tremendous taking care of me with that. Please continue with that. Uh, There's no way this thing gets done uh, without you guys. So I want to give you a shout out and a shout out to Aceberg, my sponsor. Because out to you, this show ain't going down. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, so this offensive line from a philosophical standpoint has been built health of skelter in a sense with low key ammo, really not trying to spend too much on it and divert all those assets now to the quarterback, to the skills and to your defense, especially the pass defense in order to get a road for success. 
Uh, is that going to be a winner? It's not my build style, but we've got to see how it plays out. We've seen some success, but obviously there's been failures as well. This year and next year will confirm it. Now, I'm going to go over the, the battle between the defense uh, and, the pe- and the offensive line, and you're going to see some good stuff and some not so good stuff. Uh, Cal- Calais Campbell, Conan, oh, he's over there. Yeah, he's over there. Calais Conan Campbell got his first practice and got a sack, and he used his bull rush on Jackson to get it. Now, Jackson, I've been talking about for years, I, he has gotten better. Is he worth his contract? I don't think so, unless he takes a serious step forward. But what you see here is his continual weakness that I point out. He struggles against power. Now, Calais Campbell's a Hall of Famer. He's bulked up almost 30 pounds. Powerful man, big man, 6'8". He makes even big Jackson look small. So you got to take that uh, a mitigating factor. But this is a continual struggle. His is his weak point, and teams understand that. Uh, but Campbell is exceptional at it. So that's a data point for you. Cam Brown stacked up a couple of runs late in team period. It was late against a second level guys, but Cam Brown's a special team and you don't want to see that. Tia Tart and Kamara both get pass rush wins for sacks on Skylar Thompson. Somebody I forgot to say, I uh, said two are getting in uh, late. The, one of the problems could be the exchange between the center. Now, there was some exchange and time issues. I don't know if that's Tua or Skyler or White or whoever. Uh, um, and some full starts throughout these big plays. Now, we get a lot of big runs on first down. We get a lot of big pass plays. All that stuff kind of gets kind of cut off a little bit once we get to the other side of the field. There's reasons for that. Um, but we obviously are one of the top uh, offenses. We put massive amount of points on. Although one of the biggest problems is, and I show that in my uh, a lot of statistics, once we get into the red zone, we were like number one in offensive holding. We were number one in negative plays to be behind the sticks on first down and third down. And you cannot have that even with our talent. A lot of that was penalties. A lot of that was mistakes. So this is something you we have to see fixed because despite all we got, this can kill you. Uh, just remember Don Shula, discipline. Uh, Super Bowl teams are disciplined. One full start can cost you a Super Bowl. So we this is early, expected, but it's got to change because it was a problem last year too. Uh, Jordan Brooks, out from three yards per carry, is a phenomenal dude. Uh, you might get intimidated if you see him on Twitter. He seems like he's a bad guy. Let me talk to this guy. This guy is the nicest guy, and he's a hard worker, really knows football. He is super high on Jordan Brooks. I liked what I saw, but I wasn't as high on him. But after going through this, and what you're going to see here, I've kind of ticking my way towards more Alf's eval. So Jordan Brooks had the most impressive coverage rep staying step with step with A-Chan on an outbreaker. A-Chan's like 190 pounds and he runs like a a 4-2 something. Jordan Brooks is 250. That's unbelievable. This guy really could be a huge piece for us. Now, one of the things, some concerns I have, not like major concerns, but as far as his ceiling goes... Uh, the coverage, you can see right here, Jalen Wright got Brooks, however, on a double move. Brooks came back in uh, uh, in team with a blitz uh, sack on Tua. Now, you have to remember, he's 250. And the fact that he can stay step for step on each on, on a you know single route, which is really where his strength is. But at 250, you're not going to stay when a guy cuts, makes a double move. That's one of his weaknesses in coverage. Uh, but the fact that he can do the yellow part to stay with HN is unbelievable. Uh, so uh, he got uh, Brooks also got a sack on Tua. Kamara got a sack on Skylar Thompson. So it was tons of issues. Um, but this guy is able to blitz. He's able to cover the deeps, which is very important. Play some man coverage. He's big. I'm very excited about this guy. But the offensive line, is, it's struggling a lot. Uh, so top standout of offensive line versus defensive line one-on-one drills on Friday was outside linebacker Quinton Bell. He won most of the reps, which explains why he's getting a prominent role on defense. One-on-ones are totally different than in the group, but Quinton Bell is showing something, so I got to start paying attention. So that's that. Now, Chop Robinson is a stud. Uh, will he be more than just a, a situational pass rush of high caliber? I don't know. Um, but here's 
he had a very good couple of days. Even yesterday, he was setting uh, edge on 11-11. Uh, Chop also got a, uh, a sack on uh, Mike White. Off play action, Chop closed the corner immediately and tagged off. I like this because young guys can easily freeze in the play action, but he didn't bite the attack, and he, he got to the quarterback, and that is a good sign. He's got to he's got to develop the uh, technique because he, he lacks some tools in his pass rush set, but then also the awareness to follow through on his keys and to not bite on stuff. This is very important stuff, and I like to see that. However. There is some concern about Robinson run blocking. During 11-on-11 drills, tight end, uh, Tanakana, Tanakana, I always forget, but now it's Tanakana, put Robinson on a metro rail block, moving him far out of the way on a left side run. And Connor isn't exactly known for blocking. I think this was Omar Kelly. Uh, Omar Kelly does a good job, guys, uh, really providing us. We would never have all these goodies without these guys. So we owe a little bit of... Uh, Thanks to that. But uh, this is what his eval was. It said he got hung up on tight ends a little too much. You're seeing it here. Uh, Phillips was the same way. When I evaluated him in year one, people got a little upset. I said, look, he can't handle tight ends. He's got to be able to do that. Year two, he started handling tight ends. And I'm like, wow, his run defense is going to go up. And then that's going to carry everything. And then that was when we saw the really good year. Then year three, I actually saw him start handling tackles. And he was dismissing tight ends. And so that was a three-year curve. This is, it could be, be less, could be more, could be never. I don't know. Uh, but he's going to struggle. This is his eval. It's there for a reason. Doesn't mean he's doomed or he sucks. Um, but this is something, this is going to curtail the peak of his talent. Uh, but he's going to get better. He's a hard worker. He's got high energy. And he's, it's going to take some time. But if he gets that down, he's going to be a stud. Uh, but on the positive, there's a huge difference between how Chop Robinson, the left of my, uh, Miami edge rushers, rushers move. The best mover is Bell, who played receiver in college. Now, just think about it. You got Chop. And right now, he's seeing tight ends because he's the speed rush. That's what you do. You put the tight end on the edge, and even if you're not staying at the block, you just get out and chip him and then pass him off onto the next block or the tackle usually. Then you go out and you pass block. But he's seeing that because he's the speed edge guy. But then what happens is when you got him and Chubb and Sealer and Campbell, and then on the other side, Phillips. They're, there's not how many tight ends they're going to need 50,000 tight ends to cover these speed rushes. So it's something he's going to see. But it's going to diminish a little bit once Phillips get there because they're going to put the tight end on Phillips. And so you have to understand this is a process. Uh, but at a certain point, our talent is going to stretch their ability to block. Uh, so that's that. It's good stuff. Um, now, when you get to Patrick Paul, big, big piece for us. You know I love the offensive line. I love this kid. He's smart. He's humble. He's big. We could really use this guy. And so Travis Wingfield, you'll see Dimaje here. Speaking of Patrick Paul, thought he looked really patient, comfortable in his pass sets one-on-one. On one. Kamara tried to stay back inside and cross over outside, and nobody's quicker with that move. But Paul got to the arc and shut it down. Kamara spun back inside, and Paul redirected and finished uh, and put him on the turf. Impressive patience, punch, change of direction. Had a rep against Chop in team. I think it's team play, not one-on-one. -on -one, where he dropped the anchor and completely ended the rep. Impressive day for 52. Now, we have to understand one-on-one is totally, totally different. When you're one-on-one, -on -one, the whole universe disappears. And you see your one guy there. It's like the Terminator. You look at him, and if you studied hard, it's like the, 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 the readout, strengths and weaknesses. And you're totally focused on him, and it's totally different than when you come up to the line of scrimmage, and you got people all around you, and there's a bunch of guys in front of you, and they're moving in and out, and you got to work in tandem to the guy next to you. So this is very good, and we saw that he put shop on the ground, and that's very good. But you have to judge these things differently. But this is a good, good sign. But some of his evals that he needs to go on, you would figure he's going to be a great run blocker. But that's his weak point. He's a good pass blocker. He's gigantic, long arms, huge upper body. You can't really bull rush him. He's got the uh, good feet, although the technique gets out of, out of whack. And sometimes his main thing is dropping his hips. But he can pass block. And the fact that you can't bull rush him limits your options. And so this is he's going to be a good pass blocker. He's got to finish this extra stuff. But this is his strong point. His weak point when you watch film is the run blocking. 
problem is when you're so big, even if you're gigantic like and you lurch over guys, they get underneath you and they control the leverage. You watch him in run blocking, he's not good, especially on his own stretch. They just, they just gets handled. So you see Isaiah Mack, 300-pound uh, DT, uh, push second round, left tackle Patrick Paul out of the way to stop Jalen right in the backfield. Paul then committed a full start on his next snap, his second day of committed full starts. That's something the Dolphins made an emphasis to clean up last year. They've got to. And, but you can't get on a kid. He, everybody knows this kid is, a, is, is like a big piece of beautiful marble, mostly cut out, but it's not David yet. Michelangelo needs to chip out some more, and if he does, it will be David, but it's not there yet. It's fine. You're seeing his strengths. You're seeing his weaknesses. This full stuff has got to change, but he's under pressure. It's nerve-wracking. He's coming out here. He is getting development, but he's showing some strengths uh, in his pass blocking. And if you can get this guy next year to be a quality pass blocker that can't get bull rushed on the left side, he's your pass blocker, and he can just raise that run blocking to a little bit more, then you're on your way to have a stud of a player. Uh, but you can see he is still raw, but as we said, huge amounts of potential, and some of that potential starting to shine through. How long will it totally get... Uh, uh, Come to fruition, I don't know. We'll see. But these are great signs. I love the offensive line. We got, a, I mean, you got Chop, Kamara, you got uh, uh, Washington, and uh, uh, you got Paul. Four guys, and each one is showing something. So we're a long way from here to there, but this is really good news. Now you got two are locked up. You've got your thing. You got a bunch of picks next year. If we can make something, because we've had some poor drafts, like wipe out drafts, but if we get a couple of good guys this year with what we got next year and cap space, we can keep priming this team. Ken, we'll see if it happens. Now is the time. We don't have to worry about Tua situation anymore. We got to see what he can do, and we will. Three more years of Tua, and it is what it is. But there's nothing else we could have done. If you don't like Tua, okay, what do you do? Go get an expensive guy next year, a DAC at 60. Everything's been built, all that capital, all that money to this year, next year, and now maybe extended 25. You're not finding a quarterback to drive this team cheap. Uh, we struggle to find quarterbacks in draft. Almost every team does. So this is the final eval. Two, we got two more years, I'd say, of final eval, maybe three. And so let's see how it plays out. Exciting day. Uh, at least now the drama's over. Tua did win, showed a little bit of being a bad boy, and you see, sometimes you got to be the bad boy to get things right. So anyway, I appreciate everything you guys do. Come check me out tonight on the live, uh, and the rest of the guys are going to be coming on. Uh, they, they're really great. They are. Uh, so I appreciate everything, guys. Be well. Go Fins. Curtis out. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with aceforhead.com service that'll allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.